So many of the toys we enjoy, like Wally here, begin on the big screen. Here at the Museum of Science, they're showing us how Pixar brings characters to life. The exhibit features all of Pixar's major motion pictures, so it's a, a great entry point, but, but people do have a, a really good educational experience. I mean, who can't be happy when they round the corner and there's a big Buzz Lightyear? Mike Horvath is director of exhibit design, and he's happy to see Buzz and company back from their world tour. The exhibit premiered here in 2015, after five years in development in collaboration with Pixar. This exhibition actually brings you through each phase of, uh, of the movie making process from, oh, wow. from sketch all the way to the final render. Enough talk, now it's time to get hands on. So this is Jessie's face from Toy Story. You can see how much control she has even with just one eyebrow. So there's no Botox in Pixar. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> People would come out of this exhibit and they, they actually appreciate the yeah. movies and how much more work it was than they thought it was. Oh yeah. The first Toy Story was released in 1995 and, no coincidence, has launched countless toys since. But an exhibit down the hall features the kind of toy that has been around since 1891 and that has become a holiday staple. What is it about trains that sparks the curiosity in both kids and adults? There's kids that, you know, did it when they when they were growing up or now adults or have grandkids now. So it's sort of this, you know, multi-generational um, aspect that's really exciting. How authentic is this exhibit to the city of Boston? Even though the buildings are correct in their sort of individual scale, there is a, a real mix within the layout because if the Hancock Tower was to the scale of uh, an HO train, it would actually be about nine feet tall. That would be a really big, big building and sort of dwarf the rest of the space. New to the annual exhibit is a custom built custom house. This is our, our new custom house uh, clock oh. tower building. Oh. Set up the lights complete with uh, internal lights and light shades and gargoyles and like, and, look, uh, look at this, you can see like half the shades uh, down here. So it's amazing, I mean, people always ask about, um, you know, is this 3D printed or how is it done? And it's really just John in his, in, uh, in his garage sort of sculpting things. John is John Goodson, seen here installing a museum model, also his creation. But he's more famous for his work in Hollywood, designing things like this iconic ship from Disney's The Mandalorian. I hopped on a Zoom call, anxious to meet the man behind this mini custom tower. Can you tell me what the hardest part was of making that model? Uh, probably working from photographs off Google Earth and trying to figure it out from that because I, <laughs> I didn't have any blueprints or anything. And there was an old drawing that had been done of it, which was actually the most useful reference I had. It takes a village of craftspeople and volunteers to bring the trains at Science Park to life each year. But if you're hoping to choo-choo your way into this immersive hobby, then hop a train to Malden, where you'll find Charles Rowe Supply Company, America's largest train store. Charles Rowe Supply Company is the fun store for people. We were ranked in the top um, 10 toy stores in the world. People come from all over the world to come here. Charles Rowe Jr. runs the business his father started, now boasting two floors, thousands of trains, international distribution, and a repair workshop so iconic that the only thing missing is the elf costumes. A lot of people bring in trains that they had when they were kids or their grandfather gave them. We get them going again to keep the, the family tradition going. So it's kind of heartwarming in that respect. That we make people happy. COVID-19 has kept kids away from the crown jewel here, a 16 by 32 foot layout that features six trains running simultaneously. So to bring back some of that holiday cheer, Charles let Chronicle capture a never before seen view from inside his miniature world. For whatever reason, Trains Under the Tree is the king of Christmas. They got sound, they got smoke, just like the real ones. And it's just a good feeling. Just what we need today, a good feeling. Charles Rose Supply Company started off in a most unlikely place. Charles Sr. owned a series of beauty salons. When he decided to turn his basement toy hobby into a business, the first train showed up in a small display case in one of his beauty salons. Eventually, trains took over the salon, and though they've moved a few times since then, the original sign can still be seen outside their current shop.
As for the Pixar exhibit, the Museum of Science is closed effective today in response to new COVID restrictions in Boston. Some special programming will continue, however, online. Up next, stories come to life.